becoming a disciple. You know, you can come to church back and forth, but it's really great to just review. For many of us, this might just be a review what it is to be a disciple of Christ, what it is to be a disciple of Christ. Um, then he called the crowd, right, to him. And remember last week we talked about the crowd, right? The crowd that was all around Jesus. So here we have the crowd again. And he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves Take up their cross and follow me. The New Living Translation says it this way. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. Personally, I feel every truth or instructions from God, it's good to have the backdrop of how much God loves us. Um, because hearing a scripture like this could make someone scared, like, wow, it's a lot. But when you focus on how much God loves us, it draws you. It, it compels you. It helps you to realize the honor of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. A few weeks ago, we mentioned that the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 3.17, I pray that you might be rooted and, in, and established in love and you might be able to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that passes understanding. It's amazing. When I was growing up, a lot of the older members, they used to sing a hymn and it used to inspire me because I was young and I'm like, they seem very happy to be a disciple of Jesus. And some of you older ones, and I'm in that group, might remember this hymn. And this hymn went something like this. It is glory just to walk with him whose blood has ransomed me. It is rapture for my soul each day. It is joy divine to feel him near, where'er my path may be. Bless the Lord, it's glory all the way. And the chorus was something like this. It is glory just to walk with him. It is glory just to walk with him. He would guide my steps all right, through the veil and all the height. It is glory just to walk with him. And that used to ring in my ear like, wow, they're experiencing glory as they follow Jesus, right? And it's a good thing to know the full, the full picture, not just denying ourselves, picking up our cross, but the tremendous blessing of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. A disciple is defined in the dictionary as a follower or student of a teacher, leader, or a philosopher. So when you're a disciple, you are a student or you're a follower of a teacher. Pastor Tony Evans defined a disciple of Jesus, of Jesus this way. I don't know if we have it. So a believer in Christ who takes part in the spiritual development, developmental process of progressively learning to live all of life under the Lordship of Jesus. And that's a very important definition because it shows us that it's a spiritual develop, developmental process. It's a process, right? And is progressively learning. We don't become a disciple of Jesus overnight. And we're learning to live all of life under the Lordship of Jesus. To be a disciple of Jesus is more than coming to church, being baptized, 
doing kind acts for others, or abstaining from certain activities. Those are important, but being a disciple is more than doing good deeds. Jesus tells us right here in our text of the morning, Whosoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. When Jesus summoned the crowd to come and listen to him and made this astonishment demand that anyone who wants to follow him was to deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow him, we find that this requirement was recorded immediately after Peter had declared his divine revelation of God. We find Peter saying, the Apostle Peter saying, just before Jesus gives this requirement, Peter confessed to Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of of the living God. But it's quite interesting, following like a verse or two after, we find that Peter is severely reprimanded because now Peter finds out that Jesus is going to the cross and he's like, be it far from you, Jesus. Don't go to the cross. So we find we read in verse 33 that of the same chapter, after Peter declared, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God, we find Peter telling Jesus not to do what God sent him on earth to do. And we find Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, and he rebuked Peter. This is what he said to Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. If anyone wants to be a true disciple of Jesus, he must die to his own self-centered desires and live for Christ alone, even though at times it may be very difficult. True disciples place Christ at the center of their life and above everyone else. Peter's protest, which was an attempt to save Jesus from being handed over to the Gentile nation and to be crucified to pay the price for the sin of the world, may have been born out of deep love for his master but it was ignorant of God's perfect plan of redemption. However, it generated a, sh a sharp rebuke from Jesus, which laid the foundation for Christ to tell all of his followers the price for true discipleship. The price for our salvation was paid at Calvary through the shed blood of Christ so that whosoever believes on Jesus Christ is saved by God's grace because of their faith. However, once a person is truly born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and saved by the blood of the Lamb, they have a choice. What is the choice? To follow Christ afar off, remain in spiritual infancy, and live in carnality. Or, deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow Jesus as a true disciple. To take up our cross is to identify with the suffering of Christ, not his sacrificial Christ he paid on the cross, which he alone accomplished. Jesus took up the cross out of obedience. He did it humbly, gladly, 
putting God's will and his love for God's people above himself. That's the example we can follow simply by delighting in being obedient to God and choosing to humbly consider others before ourselves. Becoming a disciple of Jesus is a journey. Think of it as cooking a dish in a slow cooker. You have to take your time and the food is not like the microwave, but the slow cooker, when you put, for example, the meat in that slow cooker, sometimes it will take hours before the flavor and the seasoning seeps into the meat. Similarly, becoming a disciple of Jesus takes time. It's a journey. I'm sure you'll agree, if you're honest, that at times we want to do our things our own way. At times we are tempted to resist what God wants us to do. But if we are willing to recommit ourselves daily to taking up our cross, denying ourselves and following him, we will become what God is calling us to be. Self-denial is saying no to what we want to do and saying yes to what the will of God is. A.W. Tozer said something that I found quite interesting. He tells us that in every Christian's heart, there is a cross and a throne. And the Christian is on the throne till he puts himself on the cross. If he refuses the cross, he remains on the throne. Perhaps this is the bottom of the backsliding and worldliness among gospel believers today. We want to be saved, but we insist that Christ do all the dying. No cross for us, no dethronement, no dying. I thought that was a very interesting thought. Am I on the throne or am I daily going to die on the cross of self-denial? As we wind down our time of looking at this scripture, the first step in becoming a disciple is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to acknowledge that you are a sinner and ask God for forgiveness, and to believe Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. Once we are a disciple of Jesus, we might want to do certain things or go certain places, or look at certain things, or say, or do different things. But being that we are becoming a disciple of Jesus, we ask God for the grace to deny ourselves and to follow him. In becoming a disciple, you might ask the question, what are things that I can do that can help me on my journey? I'm glad you asked the question. And I'm not going to give my personal experience, what has helped me as I'm striving to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. The first thing is spending time in the word of God. The psalmist said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We must meditate on God's word. We should memorize God's word. Because his word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And prayer is essential. Communing with God, spending time on a daily basis, praying. 
The Word of God tells us to pray without ceasing. Our Heavenly Father wants to commune with us. And He wants to talk to us. And as we spend more time in prayer, we will become more and more the disciple that Jesus wants us to be. Also, depending on the power of the Holy Spirit. For it's not by might, nor by power, but by His Spirit. And finally, it is so important to fellowship with fellow <laughs> believers, fellow disciples, like-minded disciples. Those are the things that I have found that has helped me and is helping me on my journey. Becoming a disciple of Jesus is a transition from doing things our way to doing things God's way. Becoming a disciple of Jesus is a transition from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. For Romans 8, 6 tell us, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Becoming a disciple is becoming less of me and more of Christ. John 3, 30, he must increase but I must decrease. All of this is a process. We must remember, it's not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. For Jesus tells us in John 15, 5, without me, ye can do nothing. It's total dependence on God to work in us, both to will and to do unto his good pleasure. Praise God. We can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Amen. Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up their cross, and follow me, becoming disciple.